So what you see on the screen here is a Vickers test. This is a typical Vickers indentation. What I want to show you is some of the different things that make things easy. When you're setting up any Vickers or Noop test, you must be in focus prior to performing a test. You have several different ways of creating this focus. The old way was looking through a microscope that'd be set on the tester right here. So if you have glasses, you don't have glasses, you're required to have glasses for your lab. These things will inhibit getting a good focus from the start. We now have a five megapixel camera installed in the machine through each objective, and it projects what you see. So now I have a non-focused indentation, and if it was drastically out of focus, I would use these two buttons here, up and down. What this is is a graduated two-speed fast movement of the z-axis or the spindle moving up and down to gather focus. I would use this to get close or a good proximity to my sample and I'll see that by the light getting brighter on my screen. Once I achieve that brightness, then I move to the dynamic scroll wheel. This dynamic scroll wheel, depending on what objective you're using, will move at a much more accurate rate. So by using this dynamic scroll wheel, if you can see the screen, just the slightest movement, I've taken something that was out of focus and put it in focus. Now I have an excellently focused Vickers indentation. Let's talk about the accuracy once we have focus. I'm going to hit the measure button. This is an automatic function, but for now I'm just going to display the measuring function. The measuring function analyzes the changes of pixels on the display, which is why it's important to have a five megapixel camera. Anything stronger than a five megapixel camera doesn't enhance it. That seems to be the threshold of getting the greatest reading of an indentation through digital optics. So you'll see that there's filer lines that pop up. We're probably familiar with the filer lines because that's a common usage for measuring indentations. But when you're using a microscope, you're adjusting these by hand. Instead of doing these by hand, you now see that it populated on the screen. All I did was hit the word measure. So this is a manual function that I'm showing you. But later on, we're going to see the automatic function. What I want to also show you is it did find the points of the Vickers indentation immediately. Even though it found the points, some of you out there are actually research labs. So when I look at that, that looks like a good read by the machine. The most difficult thing as a research lab is finding that nth degree in microns of the measurement that has to be sought out. So this particular machine, this functionality comes standard with it. You have the ability of touching either one of these lines or any of these lines, and what it will do is it'll bring up an enhanced image of each one of these points showing you exactly where we're measuring from when you're using the machine. So I highlight this line here, which happens to be the top green line, and you'll see over in this corner an exploded view of what is actually doing the measurement. Going back to the microscope, when you use a microscope, you're using two lines and you're placing them at the end of the indentation. There's a big question of whether or not you should be measured from the inside of each line, from the center of each line, or from the inside of the left and the outside of the right. It really is machine dependent. So when you have operators who are subjective, everyone doing it differently, that is, you tend to have results that will change as well. In our particular instance of measuring, we're not measuring from the filer lines that you see on the screen here. Those filer lines are to help you identify where a little red pinpoint is touching the very apex of the point of the indentation. That you will see all the way up here in the corner when you highlight each line. So now I have a little red dot that I could put exactly where I want to be. This is important for those labs that are research labs. For someone in production, their plus or minus of the results may not warrant that type of adjustment, but know it's there. So now when I look at it, I see a little red dot up there and the apex of the point, it's off just a touch. Now I'm going to move that, but instead of moving that by touch screen or by the mouse, when I click on that line, at the bottom, I get directional hours. The reason why there's directional hours is what we're doing now is we're moving in microns. We're not moving what my hand can do and control 
we're doing something that we need enhanced computer electronics to move in microns. So now you'll notice my D1 and D2 are up here. When I get my measurement, my D1 is my east-west measurement, my D2 is north-south measurement. So now if you see the change in my measurement, when I move one click to the left, and now I've centered my point, my red dot, at exactly the spot where the apex of the corner is, that is more true measurement. We're going to set up a simple one Vickers test on a sample, just to show you how easy the software is to set up. We're going to use five kilogram force as the test parameters, and we're going to do a dwell time of 10 seconds. So I've already put my sample in the machine. I've already focused it. So now what I'm going to do is I select my test from the drop-down list at the top. I pick my Vickers, my five kilogram test. My objective I'm going to use is going to be a 10 power objective. So I select that. I make sure my area is clear. So I'm going to move over to a clear area. I set my dwell time, 10 seconds, and I press start. Once it's done performing the dwell time, it goes back to the objective for which I selected. The indentation will appear in the center of your screen, and the most important part of the puzzle, the result.